Hello, I just want to take a, a few minutes to, uh, to talk about some things that I was unable to discuss publicly on Coast to Coast, and uh, specifically about uh, what's out there, the evidence uh, that I believe is significant that's really uh, contributed to, to my knowledge and understanding of the species Gigantopithecus, which is you know, commonly referred to by the media as Bigfoot. In, uh, in Lucheng, China, this is available online, you can look this up, the last known Gigantopithecus domicile that scientists discovered in 1964 up on a, a limestone cavern, they discovered probably the most significant Gigantopithecus find ever. Over uh, a 1,000 teeth were discovered and uh, three lower jaw bones. And here, we know the species, this is basically the last known domicile that Gigantopithecus ever inhabited. And the Gigantopithecus that I'm studying is substantiated by these animals because I'm looking for Rocky Mountain Gigantopithecus, as my team calls it, that live in the mountains. And this last uh, domicile is a mountainous domicile. It's precisely the same species, the same animal, the same habitation that I'm studying right now. Now, what they discovered with these teeth that is public, again, and you can look this up, is they found out the diet. When you have teeth, they examine and the enamel of these animals, and they realized this animal had a more diverse diet than pandas did. Now, we know pandas survived, and one of the reasons they said was the cause of Gigantopithecus extinction is that uh, bamboo forests have, uh, sometimes they just uh, go to blatant extinctions. They just become absolutely extinct, and they wipe out quickly. Well, if pandas survived, and what we know about Gigantopithecus, Gigantopithecus was larger than pandas. It was a primate species. It lived in groups. It had uh, caves that it survived in. It was far more likely to have survived than pandas because it was bigger, stronger. We have evidence that it was actually faster than pandas. So why did pandas survive and this species not? And the, the answer is, I believe they did survive. Now, what other evidence we have is in these teeth, besides the fact that there's enormous uh, sexual dimorphism, which shows that males were huge, which means a dominant Gigantopithecus male would have been an overwhelming adversary for men and apes and, and bears and all sorts of species. It would have been a very dominant animal. So other evidence that we have is Gigantopithecus was going through periods of arrested development. Now, arrested development that they survived, which means they were having tough times. When bamboo forests would die off, they would have to diversify into other food sources, but they were having very tough times. And this was approximately 100,000 years ago, or maybe even more specifically around the time that we assume human beings migrated across the Bering Straits to North America. Now, we have evidence with the arrested development that shows the species would have been motivated to migrate. Now, what evidence do we have of them here in North America? Well, besides the fact that there's presidents of the United States that have testified to the species being alive, judges, doctors, lawyers, thousands of eyewitness testimony, the First Nations people, not a single language in the First Nations culture does not have a name for this animal, and not a name like a ghost or some mythical creature. Names as in bear, deer, bigfoot. Bear deer Sasquatch, Bear deer Oma. Every First Nations language has a, a term for this species. Now, that in itself is also enormous evidence because any scientist will say if Gigantopithecus did indeed come across the Barren Strait, which is substantiated by all these eyewitness accounts, it would have survived here. It would have, this would have been milk and honey with 200 million bison and millions of deers and all the species that, were, that thrived here in North America. Gigantopithecus would have been enormously successful in this environment. So up until at least 200 years ago, certainly this species would have existed here. Besides the fact that we have hair samples of unknown species of primates that are corroborated in China and in North America, specifically that I know about, which I'll talk about more in my next video, but uh, the evidence is overwhelming, and it's all there. These are the things that are actually substantiated online. You can look up yourself beyond even what I know with Video 3 that I have that I've never released publicly, with all the knowledge that I have of the species of how evasive they are. Now, from this point of understanding, we have to start to figure out, well, how have they been able to evade people, and what has transpired that has allowed them to evade modern science to the point that, the, that we're at today. And I can make those kind of explanations, and I can start to, I'm beginning to understand all those reasons. So please continue to watch the videos that are going to follow that we hope will educate people and create an understanding of not only how the species is evaded, but more importantly, what's necessary for its continued survival in North America. Thank you very much.